this is dell optiplex 7050 mini pc we just need to run the boot options using the f12 so we'll be going to bios setup here and i'll show you all the configuration of this so this is the system information 16 gb is the ram 8 gb and 8 gb and slot 1 is the mass storage and if i talk about boot sequence you can see here windows boot manager so i can restore the settings reset the setting to default factory reset so we'll be going back to the boot order here again by pressing f12 we'll go to bios setup and we'll see all these options here date and time and uh, of course time zone has to be changed integrated nic is enabled with pixie boot sata operations raid is on so you can disable the raid in case you want drive sata 0 and m2 these both drives are available usb configuration enable the rear and front and then we go to here virtualization support you need to make sure that virtualization is enabled so virtualization it's enabled intel virtualization technology vt for direct io so we have enabled that also these both options are necessary to be enabled so this hardware supports the virtualization so we'll enable the uefi network stack also and enable with pixie boot and apply and exit the configuration here you can see onboard nic so we'll be booting it from onboard nic and here there are two disks which are available one is the 256 gb nvme another is the hard disk which is 1 tb and uefi boot can also be done from here and legacy boot can be done from onboard nic let's see if pixie boot is loading here you go dhcp pixie has been detected and here you go ivan toy i will be installing using the proxmox iso image so it has started booting and we'll be using terminal ui enter all right so here the configuration is being loaded network configuration and all of that just wait for this the license agreement i'll just agree to the license agreement and now you can see here that the target hard disk as i mentioned that i have two hard disks so this one is m2 this will be mainly for operating system so debian will be installed and proxmox will be installed on m2 chip which i have already shown you how we have installed it and then additional hard disk which is there will be used for the ceph storage so if you see here these are two disks one is the nvme m2 and another is sta which is the hard disk so we'll be installing on this one here and we'll go next time it has detected automatically it is fine and root password i'll be entering and administrator email next here it has automatically uh, provided the ip address 192.168.240.105 for the time being i will be going with the same 105 next and install so it will create the partition it will load the operating system we'll wait for this process to complete all right it has installed successfully and now we'll be rebooting this here you can see now the proxmox has been installed and it is loading directly from the nvme so here we are now ready to see this root and i logged in using the proxmox root id and password now we are logged in and i will now switch to my laptop i will open the browser 192.168.240.105 and its default port is 8006 here you are user id is root and password that you have set up now you can see here that the storage local storage is already there local lvm storage size is 151 gb which is total available for lvm for the volumes and disks and if i go back here to pve and disks i'll just show you the disks here you can see here there is one more disk which is one tb which we have to wipe later i will show you we will be using this as self storage so this disk is the one where we have done the installation which is nvme and its partition is the bios boot 
and then it has the partition for U EFI and LVM. 250 GB is available and this one I'll be using later for the Ceph storage as I have these three identical servers which I have already shown you. So we'll be using uh, Dell system for this purpose and if I go back here to show you the summary of this, yeah, the CPU is 8 core CPU and if I see the RAM, RAM is 16 GB out of this only 7% is used. Now I had uh, already done the installation of other Proxmox servers and here if you see these were the Proxmox server and this was running as a cluster. So three nodes are there in the cluster and there are multiple VMs also created in the clusters that I'll show you. Here these are all the containers and some of the VMs. So I'll show you how we can take the backup from these and how we can restore them into a new Proxmox virtual environment. So this one is the new Proxmox virtual environment. Here you can see there is no VM right now. I'll be connecting shared storage, SAN storage or NAS storage and I'll be doing the backup in NAS storage and I'll restore here. So continue to the next video and we'll see how we can do the backup and restore of the virtual machines and containers from one Proxmox to another Proxmox which is isolated, which is not on the cluster uh, but these are two different installations or if you want to migrate from your existing Proxmox virtual environment to a new Proxmox virtual environment, we'll see that how we can do it.